so listen. Um, starting in patch 8.2, listen to this. Whenever someone turns off their experience, turns their experience off, right? They talk to the guy, it like makes it to where they can't get EXP. All members of their group will receive a 95% re percent reduced experience. This change likely come as a result of Blizzard discussing ways to weaken leveling with 110 twinks and islands. And I responded, thank you, Blizzard. Thank you. Because out of all the problems and uh, concerns the game has, Blizzard has the, uh, the analytical mind to be able to isolate the specific most important things that are ruining the game down to its very core and then remove those entirely. So Blizzard, hats off to you. This was a brilliant idea. Thank you so much for doing this because everybody knows the only thing worse than being able to level with a 110 twink in an island is having to actually play BFA. And I guess now with this change, probably more people are going to quit so they won't have to do either one. What a fucking joke. What a stupid motherfucking pathetic joke. Like, can you believe this? Like, I, I, who the fuck is making these decisions? Like, who, really, who's making this? Have uh, okay, so, Yeah, yeah, we'll watch some videos, okay? I just wanted to, I will watch the Bellier video about this topic first, right? Just to get everybody riled up, you know? Just so, you know, wake everybody up, get a little bit mad, you know? That's what it's about. Watch how it's going Listen, we've got a million videos to watch, okay? Listen, I'll get to them one at a time. Relax. Um, hmm. It's the curb people selling twin leveling services? Listen, everybody knows what it's for. Does that matter? Like, who gives a fuck? Really, I mean, who gives a fuck about that? Like, why does that even matter at all? Uh, I mean, this is the thing, right? Is that Blizzard has... They've got... They're like this, okay? They're like, you gotta go right like this. And you gotta go to here. And you gotta go to here. And you go here. And you go over here, you're gonna fucking get banned! That's how it works. Blizzard's like a theme park. WoW's like a theme park. Except whenever you find your favorite ride, Blizzard shuts it down. That's how it works. And I'm fucking mad. It's not about the specific thing, right? It's not about the specific thing. Who gives a fuck about that? It's about the idea. The idea is what matters, right? Uh, it's the idea. And I don't care. Nobody cares about this. Nobody gives a fuck. Like, okay, now I have to go do Drusfar instead, or I have to go do something else instead, or I just have to... Like, I never even did this with islands, okay? This isn't even how you did the island speedrunnings. You would just have two level 120s with max level fucking raid gear just carry you anyway. And I would say to my guild, like, hey guys, who needs to get Azerite levels? I know, Sneaky McStab, level 110 Rogue does, and I invite two main raiders. And, and you know, like, they just kind of carry me. Right? Because they just don't really give a shit and they clear the dungeon just as fast. So this doesn't even fix the problem if Blizzard wants to actually solve this. People boost more in Freehold than Islands? Well, they do now. Yeah, Freehold is the flavor of the month now. I understand that. Um, I bet the shirt smells like death? It's not true at all. The longer I wear a shirt, the better it smells. It's not, yeah, it's not true one, one bit. Uh, how can I get more people in to buy more level boosts? Yeah, I, I know. Obviously, yes, that's right. It's all about level boosts. And I, I do think that it's like Blizzard, see the thing is nobody fucking think this if Blizzard wasn't doing a bunch of other dumb shit, right? But once you lose the trust of your community, every single thing that you do is because of the Illuminati, right? I mean, the Illuminati controls everything. And uh, Blizzard doesn't sell 120 boosts. Blizzard doesn't sell 120 boosts yet. They don't sell them yet. You understand? So, I, I mean, I, I don't think that's the case at all, right? I mean, like, let, let's be real. Like, this is obviously what's happening. Wearing that shirt for a week? Yeah, I know. Uh, of course I'm wearing the shirt for a week. I mean, Blizzard, this is just another stupid decision by Blizzard. I mean, that's really... Watch the thing. All right, I'll watch the fucking video, okay? I've uh, given my opinion. We'll look at what, what the, the belly or thing, okay? Uh, just a second. Okay. Just a second. I'm going to pull it up. Dance on fun detected situation. Okay, here we go. We'll watch this. Let me go ahead and mute this and uh, we'll start it up. All right. Uh, showering more than once a week. Well, yesterday was my showering day, but then uh, my dad and I, we had dinner, uh, you know, because it was Father's Day, right? And uh, we ended up doing that instead. 
So it's like, how fucking funny would this be? How fucking funny would it be if Blizzard ended up doing this and then like next week they add a 120 boost? To me, I think that shit was fucking funny, man. You're in a clickbait video? Wait, what? I'm in a clickbait video? Where, where? Let me see. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? I'm not even in there. Okay, let's look at the video. This is what Bellier thinks of it, okay? Terminator is bald. Oh, okay. okay. All right, you know, that's pretty good. The fun place. Yes, the Blizzard bot has detected an unintended gameplay experience, and by golly, they have destroyed it. That's right. And so this is an interesting topic. It has just came up on the patch 8.2 PTR, and uh, this is going to be... I don't know, like, whose hair is worse, mine or his. And everybody's going to say it's mine, right? Because you guys just love to shit talk me. But honestly, like, like they're both really bad. Like, I, I got a message, Bellier, and we, we got to figure out what the hell we're going to do, man, because time is running out be a video that you can listen to you don't need to actually watch it um i don't want to do this highly edited because there is a lore video that we're editing right now and i don't want this bit of breaking news to take oh, away what? from the content that i really care about the most which is the lore so what's actually happened here well blizzard have decided that if you are in a group with somebody who has got their experience disabled then you will receive 95 percent less experience that's a lot so what does this mean well Right now, for Battle for Azeroth, people at level 110 would actually lock their characters into level 110. Because it's more fun. They would get Heart of Azeroth, they would get bits of Azerite gear, they would try to power those things up as much as they can. Then they would get really high Titan Vorges from Antorus, as well as their legendaries and all of that stuff. We did this. And really it was good, awesome. like, BFA gems. So essentially, they would have... Like, they would have a fully pumped up artifact. They would have three legendaries from Legion. They would have the heart of Azeroth. They would have so much power. It was fucking awesome. And because of that, it was amazing. most classes could very quickly solo, say, Freehold yep. or Island Expeditions. For an example, you could actually solo Freehold in, I think, like five minutes, five and a half minutes. And what a lot of people would do with this... To be fair, the five minutes thing, I don't think you were trying to solo all Freehold in five minutes. You were just trying to do, like, the most experience-efficient pulls. And, and no, it was absolutely insane. Like, the way that it used to work was fucking dumb, dude. I, I, I can't even believe that's even a thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it used to be really, really fast. But I think they were just doing it in five minutes because that, you know, made sense for the instance timer. Uh, 120 boost would now be an amazing idea. Yeah, I agree is they would boost people. Now this would yep. broadly happen in a few different ways. Way number one is somebody would make an amazing twink character and they would sell their boosting services. So they'd maybe say, hey, I'll boost you for an hour, give me 5,000 gold, and you know, all we'll right. go off to the races. All You'll right. get a bunch of XP, I'll get some money. Seems all fair, right? You're just providing a service for in-game currency. That's one way that people would do it. The other way would be sometimes guilds would get that as a setup so that the guild could power level characters up through the Battle for Azeroth content. We, ne we never really did that a whole lot. Of course, there's more things than that. You My know, guild never did that. People are just going to be playing with a twinked character, and uh, this is obviously a this is obviously a, a solution to this uh, problem that is pretty extreme. Yeah, Blizzard problem. Have decided that. The idea of getting experience oh my while God. with a twinked character is not something that they want in the game. So they have implemented this change. But the problem is, I mean, the problems with this are actually in a lot of different areas. It's worth mentioning that this is also super- The only real problem is that it indicates that Blizzard doesn't understand the fuck. It's like it's something fun that players were doing and Blizzard's getting rid of it for an arbitrary reason. Like that, that, that's the, the implications are the problem, not necessarily the change. Exploitable, right? Somebody with no XP turned on can go into a dungeon group through the finder or the pre-made finder or whatever and uh, kind of grief people with this. And sure, yeah, you can kick them, but it's a bit of a strange non-intuitive system. So what if we got like three people with the experience eliminated and we queued up for dungeons and then the other two guys were just fucked because they couldn't kick us out because they didn't have a majority. And so we just sit there, uh, all right, hey guys, what's up boys? Like, we're gonna run through this dungeon. We're gonna have a good time. Hey, you, ready? you guys ready to level up? 
Yeah, I'm not, and neither are you. Fuck you. Okay, let's go. And, and like, I don't know. I feel like this is the main thing. It's like every change that Blizzard, and then they leave and get a D. Yeah, then they leave, they get a debuff. It takes even longer, right? I mean, it, it's... The, the thing is that I... Whenever I see a change like this, I look at how can I make this worse for other players, right? And, and the problem is that I don't do that anymore. But there, are, I, I, I realize it, but I don't do it. There are other people that realize it, and they do it. And, and this is going to happen all the time now. I think it's going to be fucking hilarious because Blizzard solved one problem, and they created another actual problem. So now, innocent players are going to have their experience reduced arbitrarily because of a system that Blizzard put in thinking that they were going to make the game better. I mean, that's, I mean, to me, that's not interesting because it's just so obviously a silly side effect of such a blunt solution. But uh, yeah, I thought it was worth at least mentioning that yeah. Yeah, there's this obvious downside that Fucking they haven't really thought of. And as always with Blizzard, it's like, <laughs> I will agree that the okay. core issue here is not ideal. It does feel a bit broken, and it is using, sort of using, the game's scaling system in a way that, I mean, certainly is gaming the system. Yeah, right. of course. So That's there is the fun part. There. However, just like with a lot of the fun police things with Blizzard, yep. I would say this. Congratulations, you've solved the problem, and you've made your game worse. Yes, it's possible to solve a problem and make your game a little bit worse. And I would say that a lot of that is because World of Warcraft, ideally speaking, is a virtual yeah. world. And yeah. I think when World of Warcraft is working best, that's when players can kind of have unintentional gameplay experiences. So just having the game's mechanics naturally turn into gameplay that players sort of invent for themselves, like this whole boosting thing. I th Emergent player behavior. Can you imagine an MMO that's based off of that? Oh yeah, you don't have to. It was vanilla WoW and it was actually fun. Like now, any single time that you do anything that's outside of the fucking rails of how Blizzard wants you to play the game, they just change it. You just can't, you can't do anything, dude. BFA is not an MMO. Yeah, it's a fucking casino. I think that's a real strength in the game and historically whenever people talk about the fun place i think that's what they're really talking about so let's say the recent yep. mount equipment well in order to do the mount equipment system to yep. fix a few problems blizzard actually ended up nerfing the water striders making them worse and then making a bunch of buffs mutually exclusive so yes they now i don't think they should have water walking as a mount equipment because it doesn't make any sense if I have a cleft hoof, like, there should be a certain point where, like, if your mount is too fucking fat, it can't walk on water. It's like you saw a picture even of, like, Jesus, right? He was a pretty thin guy. Like, he's not, like, this big, massive fucking dude that's the size of a cleft hoof. Like, it should be somewhere around, like, I don't know, maybe, like, one of those little hawk striders that can do water walking. And besides that, I don't th I think they should have just done the other ones. Like, why the fuck do you have to do the mount, the, the water walking one? That was like the only one that I think is dumb. Like all the other ones are fine. I will have a very cohesive Fat system. Fat shaming mounts. But in many ways, they've kind of yeah, made the game are. a little bit worse with that. And that's not really ideal. And yeah. if we go back to say Legion, Legion was a prime example of the fun place. I'd say, I'd say the best one is the rock feather kite. So that was a toy that would get, uh, basically just give you a, a goblin glider, right? Now you'd use that on top of, I forget the name of the toy, but it would Avionis boot you off feather. the air. So you send yourself up in the air, you use the rock feather kite, but then yep. you use the emerald winds. And uh, that could really, that could let you glide across half the map. Like if you went on the high mountain, yeah, the shit you was could awesome. get to anywhere so emerald winds, yeah, in the expansion. Avionis and of course, like the this is before one. flying. So Blizzard thought to themselves, hmm, that's too powerful, kill it. Yep. But the thing was, for players, that was actually a really fun system because if you were going to use that system, you started having to think about terrain. You had to get some high ground. You had to plan all of your, you know, all of your stuff. Yes. And what you were doing is you were combining three supposedly unrelated items together to come up with a better effect. And that's something the players discovered and had a lot of fun with. And because that was all self-discovered, just natural systemic, systemic stuff, it made the World of Warcraft more of a sandbox. 
and essentially it is the quashing of that sandboxy feel that I think is the issue, really the core issue that we have here with uh, what Blizzard have just done for there Twinkie. There it is. Because it essentially so, is so just we're an, an agreement. unintended gameplay experience, and it yeah. really does seem like the second somebody is enjoying- Unintended gameplay experience. <laughs> It's like the game's being made by robots. I mean, really, you think about it. Unintended gameplay experience. Oh, no. This guy's playing the game in a way that he's not supposed to. We're going to have to suspend him. We're going to have to change the game. We can't just have people going around and leveling up on one tinge. That's going to make us look bad. You know, I mean, that, that's what it is, right? I mean, it's made by robots. I, I, I'm serious. Yeah, fun police. I'm, yeah, it's, it's, was that Squidward? I don't know. I just came up with a random fucking voice and I did that. But listen, I, I just... Enjoying the game it's disappointing. in a way Blizzard didn't overtly design. They think of it as a problem and they try to solve it, just that in solving it, they end up making their game just a touch worse. And I think a lot of this just comes down to design mentality. Yep. Really, the World yep. of Warcraft team, in my view, are not trying to make a large... I mean, I don't think they're trying to make a sandbox MMO, right? They're trying to make a theme park MMO. But I think they're so fixed to making a theme park MMO that, you know, they sit down and they think, here's our players' gear progression curve over time. I bet they think they're making a sandbox MMO. I bet they're all sitting there in the, you know, the Blizzard think tank while they're all sitting on their beanbag chairs, sipping on their Slurpees with their pleated jeans and, you know, fucking superhero t-shirts, and they're all, like, 35 or whatever, and they're basically dads, and they're just, like, fucking agreeing with each other, like, yeah, man, dude, this game's gonna be so good, and they're like, oh, dude, let's put, let's put furs in the game, oh, yeah, dude, holy, totally, 100%, man. Like, that's what I think that it is, is that, yeah, pleated trousers. Yeah, they're they're all sitting around agreeing with each other. That's all they do is agree with each other. They probably think the game's great. They, 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 they think it's a sandbox MMO, 100%. Theme park, uh, where you win a loss, of, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about that. Here is our players, you know, available content menu. Here is their list yep. of things that they can do on a daily and weekly basis. Here are the meta goals for their character. But that that sort of design thinking has ended up not really leaving a lot of room for just kind of natural systemic banter. And when we look at classic, actually, you know, classic was in many ways not that designed, right? Like it, they just threw a bunch of toys no, in the world. That's yes, right. There was a theme park layout, broadly speaking, and that kind of just turned into pretty good fun gameplay. There yeah. was a lot of unintended gameplay experiences in Classic, and I think for a lot of people, that's what gives the world its mystery and its charm. So essentially, that's what Fuck I think yeah. people mean when they say fun police and when they talk about Blizzard, kind of making these very arbitrary top-down decisions that do whack players in a way that just feels like you know, we were doing nothing wrong. This wasn't actually damaging what anyone. What did we do to if deserve anything, this? It was just providing some gameplay. So, like, why? Why? You know, I think that's. I think that's really how people feel about changes like this. The big why. And, you know, there are some that are a little bit more mixed up and interesting. I think the best example of that is the pre-made group finder. So back in Legion, right, you would have your automated pre-made group finder stuff for world quests, you know, world quest group finder. So you go into a world quest area, boom, button appears, you hit yes, it automatically puts you into a group and you all, you know, clear through the world quest like five times faster. And that meant that people were doing a lot of world quests because you would get some pretty quick reward, and that ended up being a normal expected style of gameplay. Yet, it obviously was pretty broken, not really bad. See, here's the thing with talking about shit like this, is that there are examples of unintended gameplay that is kind of harmful for the game. I think the World Quest Group Finder, World Quest Group Finder in Legion is borderline. Right, because whenever you can just fly over there, click a button, and somebody else does the quest for you, it's like, what is this, like Uber Eats for World Quest? Give me a fucking break. And, you know, the driver never even gets tipped either. Like, what the fuck is this? So, yeah, obviously there are points where it becomes so ridiculous that, yes, obviously Blizzard needs to do something about it. And that being the case, 
is not necessarily evidence for every single decision Blizzard makes to try to streamline gameplay in a certain direction is a good one, right? There are good decisions they do in that regard and bad ones. I would say that the World Quest Group Finder, if I had to fall off on one side of the fence or another, I would say was probably a good decision, but then if you combine that with how much longer it takes you to do World Quest and BFA, I never see anybody going around doing World Quest and BFA because they take fucking forever, you don't get anything out of them, you can't fly, and it's just there they just take longer i mean as i said it was the fucking the drusfar one with the fucking pigs how many pigs do we have to kill I, like I, I don't know it just is insane like so it, it, it might have stopped this behavior but indirectly it stopped people uh participating in the content too uh, is it raid finders just that people doing work for you well, yeah, and I also think that I don't think Raid Finder is good for the game. It's fucking terrible for the game. But you know what? Blizzard disagrees. Uh, World Quest should be groupless. No, of course not. You should always be able to group of people and do stuff together. That's what the game is about. Balanced and yeah, people could just join a group, idle and get completion. And if you looked at the invasion points from, uh, you know, from Argus, they were utterly trivialized by that system. However, yeah, because nobody would have done it without that. A problem there. Right? This is not an intended way to play our game. We don't like it, so they decided to remove it. Yep. And what happened when they removed that? Well, turns out People stopped world doing quests it. are actually really pretty bad quality content. And if people have to spend four or five times as long doing those world quests, they're not going to feel good about doing world quests. And if you look at Battle for Azeroth and world content, whew, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not great, is it? No, it it's fine. Like, the world quests are fine. Here's how you should... Blizzard should look at world quests in one way. There should be... You should be able to... If you have good enough gear... You should be able to complete a world quest in one pull. That was always my meta in Nighthold. Was that if I could go and aggro enough mobs... And pull them all together and fucking AoE them all down in one pull and get it done. Like, literally, I fly down, get everything, AoE them down, complete the quest, and I go to the next one. And I felt like a fucking badass whenever I did that. That was awesome. And then now, like, after the, you know, in the, the BFA ones, you can never fucking do that. Right? You, you draft the souls. Well, it wasn't even that. It was the Odin's Fury. Like, I, I think about, like, what makes me so fucking sad is that I see pictures of Legion and I get nostalgic. Of Legion, Legion, Titan forging, legendaries. How the fuck can I get nostalgic about that? But I am. What the fuck happened? Like world quests were amazing in Legion, and in BFA they're fucking terrible. Certainly, you know it's good that the, you can't uh, now. the faction yeah, you incursions can't. were a bit more, you know, uh, like sort of clustered together. It would almost feel like quest stacking, and they're pretty fun in war mode as long as you get some balance. And thankfully, in the next patch, well, Najatar is pretty eh in terms of world quests but mechagon is actually pretty well structured and a lot more free form and sandboxy that's which is good what i want to see from you guys bliss uh, but that world cross group finder thing is another really good example of the fun place right where just the player's perspective and the developer's perspective are so different and from the player's perspective it just seems like the developers are deluded yeah from their perspective they're just fixing a problem world quest group finder clearly not intended clearly a bit broken yeah, and powerful it's, it's too much but also the devs are clearly deluded in thinking that world quests are really good content in you know current year well, it's like, I, so you have to use two arguments here, right? Number one is that players will always trend towards the fastest solution with the least amount of effort. It doesn't matter if it's fun or not. They will always do it. And I use an example for this whenever I talk about the same thing as Diablo 3. Diablo 3 had a number of different uh, things that you could do. And doing those things would obviously uh, give you the highest experience per hour. But they were extremely repetitive and very boring. But you would do them over and over and over because that's what you needed to do to level as fast as possible. Uh, efficiency is fun. Efficiency is fun, except for whenever efficiency is killing the blacksmith's wife 800 times an hour. And eventually you get fucking tired of it, right? And yes, obviously Blizzard should try to stop some of those things. But also at the same time, you have to look at like why are people trying to speed up this content so much, right? Why are people so hell-bent on not participating in this content? Maybe, at a certain point, it's because the content is bad.
So that's a bit of a tricky situation. Overall, what is this uh, change doing, though, from patch 8.2? I mean, we've just talked about philosophy and sort of, you know, historical stuff for, for a bit, but we do need to talk about the, the next patch and what this all sort of means. And there is a little bit of a tinfoil hat theory that we could put on. And that bit, uh, tinfoil hat theory is the Blizzard don't want people trivializing one to, one, uh, to 120. And, you know, if they were going to do the level 120 boost, they were going to do that in patch 8.3. You know, it would make a lot of sense to remove uh. the thing that trivializes that section of leveling, wouldn't it? And oh, I can't say man. they're doing this, and it's obviously the sort of thing that they would deny, but if you look at that recent survey that we covered in the news video, right? That survey question was, would, basically it was like, would you like... Uh, you know, would you partake in a level boost that cost $40 that saved you 120 hours? So it is wow. clear that at least from the business wow. analytics section of Blizzard, they view the level boost as time is money, friend. That's how they view it, right? They view it as being time is money. So if well, they obviously. see something that is a little bit too much and they, they nerf it, it does make the value proposition of a level 120 boost a little bit better. I wonder how many people started buying boosts after they nerfed all the leveling that you were able to do, right? It's like, because, like, obviously you have to do it with the heirloom armor, right? Or the heritage armor. But um, now, like, you're not really able to, like, after they did, what was it, the 7.35 leveling changes and they made leveling a lot slower? Like, I wonder how many more people bought boosts after that. I would assume probably a lot more. And uh, I, that's that's what I think their mentality is around, right? Structuring and creating the game in a way that reinforces purchasing microtransactions. Or, fuck that, that's a macro transaction. That's a lot of fucking money. That's a whole video game. Like, yeah, it's, it's too much, man. Uh, oh my god, a business making a business move. Well, th what, a stup what a stupid comment. What a stupid fucking comment that was. Yes, obviously, businesses want to make money. But whenever you make money by exploiting your com your consumers and by lowering their trust in you as a brand, you are basically selling out long-term loyalty for short-term profits. Because Blizzard has made a hundred mistakes in the past, and people have forgiven them for it because they thought that Blizzard was on their side. The moment that you have different problems like that happen i'm not we're not gonna ban him okay he's gonna learn the moment that you have something go wrong because you're not always going to end up you, you know on your feet sometimes you're gonna get knocked down and you're gonna make a mistake wad is an example of that wad is an example of a mistake that blizzard made and a lot of the player base said you know what you fucked up but we're gonna give you another shot and then legion happened and a lot of people came back. Having that trust and that loyalty is so much more important than one or two quarterly profit margins. That's so much more important because that's how you build a 20-year customer. You don't build a 20-year customer by nerfing something and then creating something to make them pay to get through the thing that you nerfed. That, that's how it works. That, that's how you build a, a community. That's why BlizzCon is literally a convention celebrating the company of Blizzard. Because that used to be their mentality. Is that they focused on their community and they focused on making games for players first. So much that people would travel around the world to go to one place each year to celebrate how much they love that company. That's how much it matters. It has nothing to do with, yes, oh, a business making business decisions. Every single decision a business makes does not necessarily have to be to make money in that exact transaction. There are a lot of things that businesses do that create goodwill that produce money down the line. Like this is just a short term, short sighted profit decision. And it hurts the game and it hurts the community in the long run. Are they doing that? I can't. I don't know. 
They might, though. They might be. They certainly might. And and you're asking be that because honest, they don't have I, the I trust. I more suspect of that a while ago, but now I'm actually a lot more willing to think that, that probably that there's no K chance that's what they're doing. So a little bit of that, but also I actually do overwhelmingly think that this primarily is just the devs seeing this as unintended gameplay, seeing it as a problem, and deciding to fix the problem. Yeah. Instead of, and this probably. is what I wish Blizzard would do, and I think this is just their design culture, their design DNA. It clearly is something like that because regardless of expansion, this is how they've operated. They don't embrace the fun. That's the problem over there. They don't embrace the fun. They can only seemingly think of fun in terms of the fun that they design, but they seemingly just are not willing to let things happen naturally and actually play along with it. Now, it could be that this whole twinking situation is not the ideal time for them to just see that something odd's happening and play along with it. Well, but they have let's been. Let's go back to that. They've been doing it for months. Kite, um, a Brulefist Idol, that was the toy. An oh, yeah. Emerald Wind example, okay? They could have noticed, hang on a second. Players are really enjoying this form of gliding. Because you've got to remember, you have to sort of do the technique right, and then you would have to refresh your emerald it was fucking annoying every every few seconds let's be honest fucking annoying so they could have thought to themselves you know this is a form of traversal that our players are actually enjoying and it's not broken in the way that flying is right it doesn't you know you can't use a glider and then go up a tower and skip everything so how about they see that that's fun they see the players enjoy doing that and they think why don't we embrace this why don't we make this a game mechanic why don't we actually try to design a really fun glider that you can use in World of Warcraft? We've had the Goblin Glider for a long time. And, you know, wow. what? maybe wow. we could take the signal that players okay. enjoy using the Goblin Glider and actually okay. turn that into something that's a bit more fun. Maybe they could put a little heat fence in some zones, right? So you go in your glider, ooh, you go up. And you could create it's exciting. some really cool gliding game. So you even made a noise for it. And you could do something like that in a way that it could just add a nice little layer of traversal along the game. Even take the um, oh, clicking on the grappling points in Stormheim. Yeah, that I was get fun. That was themed around Stormheim, and maybe you don't want it in every zone, but maybe you know you click in the grappling point, and this is a great uh, this is a great example of game mechanics naturally coming together to combine to be really powerful. You could click in that. You could maybe they could program it so you just you know you get some momentum. You use your glider, right? And then oh, that would be really fun. You yeah, that would be cool. Place. I guess sure. What I'm trying to say is. There's a lot of ways in which players will just, with the systems that they're given, they'll find things. They'll naturally gravitate towards some things that they find to be really fun. And I think Blizzard could do a far better job of actually observing those things that players do and trying to think about why they are fun, trying to understand why. And they could learn a lot from that. In this case, maybe the reason why people are doing this... They don't understand why things are fun. As I said, this is why they do a Q&A. When was the last Q&A they ever did, by the way? Like, when did that even... When was the last time that shit even happened? I'm just thinking about that. Like, what, when, does, when did that even happen? It must have been, like, two months ago? Three months ago, patch 8.1? Like, listen, everybody knows the Q&As are just advertisements for the patch. Ian, can you please do another q and I'm running low on content, okay? Could just do another Q&A so I can watch it again. Like, the last Q&A, like, let me see... Like, I remember the Q&As, listen, back at the beginning of BFA, right? At the beginning of BFA, um, the Q&As had, like, what, fucking 35, 40,000 viewers, 50,000 viewers, I think one of them got. The most recent q and I remember this, had 13,000 viewers. That's because a lot of people just don't give a fuck anymore. They don't care anymore. It's just, and there were more people, the thing about it is that, like, Ironically, I remember I had like 30,000 people, 25, 30,000 people watching me watch the Q&A. So there were more people watching me watch the Q&A than were watching the Q&A. And I did, I mean, this this was not really the case as much than the other ones before because, you know, like, I mean, I guess maybe people might have just gotten in the habit of it. But still, it's just insane that it was that big of a difference. 
And it's, I, I feel like, yeah, the reaction meta. Yeah, well, the reaction meta, I mean, like, people have been reacting to videos on Twitch now for over a year, right? I mean, this isn't something new that me or Greek or Trainwreck or XQC or somebody like that thought of. No, this is just something that's been going on for quite a while now. And it, it's completely fine, right? I'm fine with the reacting stuff. But at the same time, it's like, it, that's not why there were that many more people watching right, right on my channel. Uh, I think that honestly, they've just lost the interest of the player base. That That's the main problem. And they have to sit there in the Q&As and explain, well, the reason we did this was because players were having fun. You see, you're going to have fun whenever you do, whenever you do the world quests in this way. And it's just, it's more fun for you. See, we're going to tell you how to have fun because we don't, we don't know. We have no idea. Right? That's what it is. They have to tell people how to, how to have fun. Twink level boosting so much is because they don't enjoy the leveling process of BFA. Maybe there's a design thing they could learn from that. Yeah, maybe. With the gliders. Like, maybe, sure, people are doing it because they get around the place, but they're also doing it because it's really fun. Maybe with the world quest stuff, I mean, sure, people are primarily doing it because it's super quick, but maybe one of the nice things about it was just how many people you'd see while you were going across the world. And maybe there's a way they could better, like, better learn from that and create that fun experience just more often and more naturally through game mechanics that are not contrived, such as having to use an add-on. So yeah, I think that's there's true. A lot that, there's I a lot agree that with that. Could learn yeah, my hair is bad. Miss out on because of their seemingly just the the DNA of their company, how they do things. And uh, sometimes it is pretty darn frustrating to, to see it happen because... Somebody said, why has Ian not been fired yet? Stop blaming everything on Ian. Like, the game was shit before Ian. Like, the thing is that everybody wants to, like... You know what I really think this is? I think that it's a collective... Like, imagine everybody's holding the ball, right? There's a really, really big ball. Everybody at Blizzard, WoW team's holding the ball. And they're all together at the same time. Oops! Wow, and then they dropped the ball, right? That's what happened. It wasn't just like two or three people. It's not like, oh, this guy's messing everything up. No, no, it's everybody, okay? Like, it's like you have the same stupid shit happen in PvP. Like, PvP, you, who, what, like, what, what about the arena tournaments? Like, oh, wow, I wonder, is he going to use the absorb shield? <laughs> wow, he did. Oh, did it proc? Okay, all right, well, you know, 70% dampening. Let's, let's just get her done, boys. And everything just takes fucking forever. And uh, 17 years, yeah, the, the viewership for the arena tournaments is at an all-time low. And why is that? It's because it's not fun to watch and it's not fun to play, right? I mean, because it, it, arena has never really been fun to watch. But at the beginning of BFA, there were more people that watched the arena tournaments because the player base for arena was larger because arena was a bigger component of the game and people enjoyed it more because you were able to get gear from arena that you could use in PVE. So it actually created more of an organic audience for arena by making all those things to be the case. And Blizzard, I, I don't think they, they don't, they don't get it. They just, they don't get it. I, I really think that they should, I think they should talk to some of the people that genuinely have experience and like i don't know like i i think that they should talk to like me or some of the other streamers and say what should we do like that it just makes sense like what should we do to make these tournaments better because it it seems to me like obviously they don't know what they're doing right that i'm, I'm i mean like maybe not me right you could say another streamer too but i i think they need to talk to somebody you're, you're looking there and it's like, we yeah. want you to do well. We want A2 to be better. And being real, this doesn't really affect A2, right? A2 is still going to be a really solid patch. Uh, this is just an example of, oh, God, Blizz, really. Um, so, you know, we're all there like, come on, we want you to do well. We are cheering for you, Blizz. And then, you know, you look over like, ah, ah, they just self-owned again. <laughs> Could they please not? So there you go. That is my, in a very, a very loose rambly video, that's yep. my thoughts on this change. I think it is pretty needless. I don't think it serves any particularly positive purpose. All that it does is kill a gameplay niche that people were enjoying. And frankly, in BFA, if there is a gameplay niche that people are enjoying, even if it's not perfect, how about you let them enjoy it until you release the good expansion? <laughs> right? I mean, assuming Nino is going to be good. When's that going to happen? Yeah, when's that going to happen? And, uh, you know, deal with it as a part of an expansion that gives people a lot of good things. 
anyway there we go let me know what you think down below very keen to hear and uh we'll be back to our regularly scheduled content tomorrow oh man dude uh people complaining about it uh being abused to troll uh don't care and they're just complaining to have an end agenda keep twinks remove it was good well what do you mean like a hidden agenda like why, I mean, yeah, I don't really care about people getting trolled with it. I, why would I give a fuck about that? I don't care. I don't have a queue for beat dungeons, but it's still like a stupid thing that shouldn't happen. Right? That's my opinion. Opinion of the level squish? I think the level squish was... I don't know. Like, I, I would actually like to see the level squish happen, but not if there aren't, like, a lot of, like, very large changes that happen in association with that. Any publicity is good publicity, so if they can't come up with anything smart or change something, it keeps people from thinking about the game. Well, yeah, I think so. Hidden agenda. Yeah, everything is an agenda. Maybe it's just a bad idea, right? And it's like, I'm not a fan of twinking, but I feel like whenever you have a 110 twink that is more fun than a 120 character, then you have a problem with your 120 characters. And I think the, the solution to that is is not to make the twinks worse, but it's to make the 120s better. There's very, very clearly, obviously, something that people are getting out of the 110s that they're not getting out of the 120s. Uh, every animal squish was a mess. Imagine how bad they'll fuck up the level squish. Oh, yeah, they'll fuck it up in a bunch of different ways. But, I mean, I still think they should probably try and do it. Um, here we go. Aw, oh, shit. Here we go again. If you're still watching videos, Wild Survival Refugee Guide, I did watch that, Genesis. Thank you very much, Thunderbits. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you. What up, bot spamming trade chat for freehold runs? Was that worth the change? Well, no, because now they're just going to spam it. If All right, so if the problem, let's look at like, okay, so if you're, if the premise is that the problem is that people are spamming trade chat for runs, then how would changing one way of them doing runs fix that? Because they can just spam trade chat if there's two 120s, they can just spam trade chat, they'll take a low level character and do normal mode islands with them. That doesn't actually prevent the problem of spamming trade chat, that just transforms the problem into something that's nearly identical. So, it, no, I, I don't think so at all. It, it wouldn't even make sense for that to be the case. Uh, do you even read these anymore? I just did. Cheese puffs. There you go, man. Uh, thanks in advice. Uh, thanks in advance and give the great dreams. Thank you very much, cheese puffs. I appreciate it. I try to read as many of them as I can, man. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Agenda Andes. Exactly. Uh, watch Matt say, I've got a couple other ones that we're going to take a look at. There's a classic wins video that we're going to watch after this too, because the, uh, the servers are still down. We're, we're trying, I'm trying to decide like if we'll do the, uh, the welfare Wednesday stuff today or not. The only thing that I'm kind of concerned about is that we don't really have, uh, what do you call it? We don't have a lot of mods right now. And so we'll probably go through a couple more videos and, uh, then we'll see, uh, you know, who's on and who's available. And, uh, if we have enough mods and everything, uh, we'll be able to do it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and also, by the way, I, I am going to promote up some, some new mods too. Uh, because like mainly, I mean, the real reason for it is that like I've kind of extended my stream times because my streams recently have just been longer in general. And in being longer, uh, we're, we're going to have, you know, obviously some people that, you know, it doesn't meet their schedule anymore. So we're going to get a few more mods just to make things easier for them too. Uh, so let me go ahead and go over and find this thing. Uh, okay, where is it? But uh, I, in general, I totally agree with Bellior's, uh, you know, his... Just a second. Uh, uh, Bellior's analysis here, I, I totally agree with it. I think it's a great idea. And uh, all the things that he's saying are completely true. So uh, I, I'm very glad about that, man. Time all the viewers asking for mod? No, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, fact again, games are not made by design. Oh, yeah, yeah. Games being made by designers and not gamers. Uh, I really want to know, like, how often a lot of these guys actually sit down and play their own games. Because it seems very obvious to me that they're making decisions that theoretically are really, really good. But if you had any sort of play testing and any sort of understanding of how the game worked in like a, uh, a functional way, then you'd know that the changes aren't as good as they might think they are. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they don't play their own game. Well, I don't know, right? I, I mean, it... It seems like a lot of the changes I don't see, like for Master Loot, for example, I don't see how someone could remove Master Loot and be a raider, right? Like, how could you be part of, like, a Mythic Raiding Guild and think removing Master Loot is a good idea, right? And even if there are some people that think that, the overwhelming majority, based off of all of the external feedback they got, was all of Mythic Raiders that did not like that. So how could you make that decision while at the same time being part of that community? I, I have no idea. Blizzard laid off most of their Q&A and you can see the results. Well, I mean, like, I mean, they laid them off after BFA. 
like after BFA came out, yeah, I'd fire a lot of people too. Because obviously they weren't getting their money's worth. BFA came out and it was a fucking joke. Like, of course they fired him. Uh, Ian's the Guildmaster of Elite of Jerks. That's one guy, right? Like, Ian's not the only person that works at Blizzard. Like, I understand, yes, Ian, like, I, I think Ian in general uh, probably knows what's going on a lot more than most other people. Uh, it's what it seems like to me. But he's not the only person that works on the game. That's the point that I'm trying to make.